Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our webinar tonight brought to us by Alvexo, or brought to you by Alvexo, one of the world's leading providers of CFD and Forex trading. And tonight, we're going to be learning all about Bollinger Bands, one of the way, great indicators to use for trading CFDs. And when you trade with Alvexo, you can trade CFDs on stocks, indices, Forex, commodities, and cryptocurrencies, because Alvexo is a real broker for real traders. When you trade with Alvexo, you have many choices to customize and personalize your trading. You can decide to trade on our web trader. Our web trader is easily accessible with any internet connected device. You can trade anywhere at any time on any device. Now you can jump from one platform to the next to the next. Your data follows you, your open trades follow you, your history follows you. Because you can also download our mobile app to trade on your smartphone anywhere at any time for Android and iPhone and for your tablet devices. And last of all, you can also download the MT4 terminal, which is the most professional trading environment available to traders today. And again, you can go from one to the next to the next and figure out which, ones fit, which one fits your style or which one fits your time frame or your needs at the moment. Now with Alvexa, we also give you a lot of tools, information, and help you along with your knowledge. We give you daily, weekly, and monthly trading signals pushed directly out to the platform. Plus with Alvexa, you get outstanding advanced technology. You get incredible customer support and customer service. You get all the services you can imagine from market news to web, like webinars to tonight, daily signals, uh, weekly and daily market analysis. And then one of our most cherished events is Alvexo holds events all over Europe and we have seminars and conferences and you'll be invited to attend these and meet with our staff face to face and listen to speakers and participants and get and become part of the markets. Now tonight's class is being recorded. And if you wish to see a recorded version of tonight's class, you can do so in about 24 hours by using the same link you used to come to this live class, and then you'll see a recorded version. Now, as you know, Alvexo is a regulated provider, and therefore I am required to give you some standard risk warnings that are required by the regulator. And I'm going to read the first part of this, and I would appreciate if you could read everything that comes up on your screen. CFDs are complex instruments and come with a high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 69.8% of retail investors' accounts lose money when trading CFDs with this provider. You should consider whether you understand how CFDs work and whether you can afford to take the high risk of losing your money. Now, tonight's webinar is considered a marketing communication and does not contain or should not be construed as containing investment advice or an investment recommendation or an offer or a solicitation. Now, we all know that all this is written by an attorney or many attorneys. It wasn't written by me for sure. But I will tell you in tonight's class, I am going to be using some live charts. But these charts are being used to show you specific ways that indicators work. I have not chose any asset because I've looked at the asset and want to make a trading suggestion. I've been looking at assets and placing Bollinger Bands on them to help explain to you what certain things read on those assets. And they are not any recommendation for you to make any trade during this class. Now, during this webinar, I will provide you lots of my personal opinions and experiences. I'm sure if you listen so far, you know I'm pretty opinionated. I've been trading since the 1970s. And I'm going to provide you general information that's available to the public. Believe me, there is no super secret sauce out there. Okay. McDonald's might have some, but there is none anywhere else. <coughs> Nobody's going to give you a a secret trading system or a robot or an, an expert advisor or give you a, a, a tell you to 
to come read my paper at such and such a time, and I'll give you the greatest signals of the world. There's lots of people out there giving you good information, but there's nobody that can promise you what the market's going to do. You should never make a trade that you haven't, you don't fully understand, and you haven't made the decision. Take all of these people's advice, and you can use it as part of your trading plan. But please don't rely on some robotic trading system that's going to tell you everything. Doesn't happen. If it was true, None of us would be doing our any jobs. We'd just be trading and making tons of money. Now, because we have a lot of people attending class, I can't open the floor to live questions because it's just too, too many people. And I'd never get everybody's questions answered. So if you use the question box on your screen, I just type in your question. Everything will be recorded, your email address, your, 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 everything that you register with, and we will write you back a detailed answer. Or if you'd like us to call you back, just put your phone number in, and somebody from our financial analyst team will call you back and answer your questions. Now, remember, when you're trading with Alvexo, you are trading what's called a CFD a contract for difference. Now, this is a type of financial instrument that allows you to benefit from the fluctuations of price of stocks, commodities, indices, more, without really purchasing them. They're known as derivatives. And most people don't realize today, most of the things you buy, sell, or trade in the market are derivatives. Now, if you're investing and buying something you own, stock, if you're buying the shares, are not a derivative, you're buying the actual shares. But a derivative is just something that derives its price from the actual market value. Now, a CFD mirrors the actual product. If gold is trading at 14.02, so is the CFD. If gold goes up to 14.03, so does the CFD. What the CFD is, is a contract that is approved by the regulator and standardized, but you never own an asset. You're not buying the asset. You are buying the contract because you're not delivering anything. So a CFD is the value between the open and the close. The difference between the open and the close of, of the CFD is your profit. If it went in the direction you selected. In other words, going long is pretty easy to understand. You buy a CFD for a share, a couple of shares of Alphabet. And I don't know what Alphabet's trading at, but say it's trading at $400 and Alphabet goes up to $500. Well, to open your CFD, you bought, and to close your CFD, you would sell. So you bought Apple of, uh, Alphabet at $400, you sold it at $500, and you made $100 profit. Now, I don't think Alphabet moves that much in a day, but maybe you held it for a week or a month. There's a CFD you can hold for as long as you'd like to hold. There is no delivery of a CFD because you don't own it. It's just the derivative. Now, this gives you a couple of advantages because you can go short. <coughs> Going short allows you to sell something you don't own to buy it back later to make the profit. So in other words, if Alphabet was trading at $500 today and something told you Alphabet was going to fall, you could sell that Alphabet CFD in the morning even though you don't own any, but buy it back tomorrow afternoon when it hits $400 and your profit would be the difference between the five and the four. Okay. Now, so one of the biggest advantages to CFDs is because you're not taking physical delivery of the CFD, you can use what's called leverage. Leverage is not actually a credit line. Nobody applies for credit. Leverage is a way to multiply your capital to use in your trading. Since you're not taking physical delivery, because if you were buying gold and I was delivering it to you and you bought $10,000 worth of gold, I need you to give me $10,000. But since you're only taking a side of a contract, okay, I will give you the rights to give me a deposit for so much money. And that deposit is based on the volatility and how much that that particular asset or that asset class moves in, a, in, an, in an average time. 
Now, look, the margin and the leverage. Now, the margin is the, the cash that's required in your account. Imagine it's what the bank requires you to have for a down payment of your house. You're not paying the bank. You're buying a $100,000 house. The bank's saying, okay, you got to put down 10%. You got to put down $10,000 and we'll finance 90. When you sell the house, you get the whole thing. Okay. Now, leverage is controlled by the regulator. It's not arbitrary. It's not based on your credit history. It's not based on the size of your account. Leverage is controlled and everybody who trades gets the same leverage. Margin, which is your deposit or the, the amount of free liquid cash you have to have in your account to negotiate that contract or the down payment on your house is set by the regulator also. So it's not an arbitrary thing between broker to broker to broker. It's not an arbitrary thing between your account and somebody else's account or what level your account is. It's set by broker. And because you're not taking physical delivery, you can use leverage. Now, leverage is one of the biggest advantages of trading CFDs, but leverage has a drawback. For every dollar that you can potentially earn in profit, you face that same risk of losing that dollar. In other words, if I say you can buy, if hypothetically, the leverage on stocks is 20 to 1. Okay, I'm just that you can go on our site and see exactly what is set by the regular, but 20 to one and you have a thousand dollars in your account, which means then I would let you spend or buy a contract valued up to $20,000. So instead of buying one share of Alphabet of 400, you could buy 50 shares. And that meant if Alphabet went up to $500, you would make what? You would make 50, times $100, or you would have made $5,000. Okay. But it also means that if Alphabet fell $100 and you had to close out your, your trade and you had a loss of $100, in other words, you'd also lose that same $5,000. So for every penny of potential profit is you face a mirror image of potential risk. So keep that in mind. And that's one of the reasons you always set stop losses. You always have to manage your risk whenever you're trading, no matter how experienced you are. In fact, the more experienced you are, the better you get at placing your stop losses. Because the whole idea of trading is to minimize your risk and maximize your profit. In other words, if you have five trades that don't do what you thought they would and go against you, but you kept your losses to $100 per trade or $200 per trade and closed them out and put your stop losses and when the market didn't do exactly what you thought, close your trade. And then you had two two trades that made the $5,000. You still netted two trades of $5,000, $10,000 minus the trades you lost. So overall for your five trades, you netted some profit because you need to keep your risk to a minimum. So tonight, let's talk about exactly that, how you would make a trade or how you would improve your trading decisions and how you could also use Bollinger Bands for setting stop losses to minimize your risk. Now, Bollinger Bands are a very unique indicator. It's one of the most popular indicators in the markets today and it's created by John Bollinger. And one of the things that makes it unique is John Bollinger is still around. He's still active in the markets and he actually operates a website that's called what? www.bollingerbands.com. And he's still active. He's still publishing papers and writing information and conducting seminars and classes. So this is one of the few indicators you can actually get guidance, not individual personal guidance, but guidance directly from the horse's mouth. Now, Bollinger Bands are unique in many ways, but they're an indicator that helps us see if stocks or, or assets or, or Forex or CFDs are trading in overbought or oversold territory. Now, there has been an abundance of information published in the internet on Bollinger Bands before the internet, books and every, there's, there's so many 
gurus and strategists that are trying to sell you their own system or their own modification of Bollinger Band, or you do this, and when Bollinger Band says that, you buy or you sell. There's all kinds of this discretionary material out there. You can go in the markets and read it all, or you can go to BollingerBands.com and read what John Bollinger says. Now, <clears throat> tonight, I'm going to teach you the standard uses and the standard settings for Bollinger Bands. Any modification beyond that would become your personal modification or this guru that's out there telling, well, adjust your setting this and adjust this. The fact is, he knows in his head what he's doing, but he might say when this happens in the market, that happens. But there's no history. There's no millions of people using it that way that you can check and find. So either you've got to back check what this guy's saying and make sure it actually works and works on a consecutive basis in the market you're looking at, or go on his word. And what did I say about trading on somebody else's word before? Now, Bollinger Bands can be applied in all markets. It works great in equities, Forex, commodities, futures. Now, one of the nicest things about Bollinger Bands compared to a lot of indicators and oscillators we get out there is that Bollinger Bands works in any time frame and it quickly adjusts to short term time frames or to hourly time frames and remember a lot of these indicators and oscillators were adjusted or built or created back when the markets were slower or there was just stock trading and they've been modified for today's type market bollinger bands has always worked in any time frame and therefore they are historically checked and correct. Now, Bollinger Bands are a technical analysis tool. Specifically, they are a trading band. Now, trading bands or envelopes serve the same purpose. They provide relative definition of high and low. Now, that can be used in a very rigorous trading approach. It tells you if the price right now is very high, the price right now is very low, okay? And gives you, it actually gives you a point at which you can decide whether the market's about to flip or switch, and it, can, and it gives you boundaries around price. It envelopes or forms an envelope around price. So before we go on, let's go over and look at some charts because otherwise it gets very boring. In fact, before, instead of going and explain all this to you here, I'm gonna do it on a live chart so you can see where we're going with this. Hold on, let me pop up some charts here for you. Okay, so we are currently looking at the Euro US dollar one day chart. Not for any reason whatsoever. Okay, except this is the chart I had up and this is the chart I'm going to show you. Now, Bollinger Bands are a indicator that is placed over top of the current price. It's one of the few indicators that's not placed below the bottom of your chart. It actually, and one of the nice things about it is because it's placed over top of the price chart, you're actually reading price action along with the Bollinger Bands. Now, as you can see, this Bollinger Band consists of the blue upper and lower borders, and the blue in between, the light blue, is, the ba is just the background. It's a shading to let you see it better. It's got no value. And then the middle line is a standard moving average. It is the crux of Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands is all based on this moving average and the band above and below. So this chart that's up on your screen right now, you see this orange line? That orange line is called the basis band. It is a standard moving average of a 20 period close. That's all it is. You all should know how to computate or put a moving average on your chart. That is the basis point of the Bollinger Band. From there, we then do a calculation that is quite involved and it's called standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is a term or a formula used by statisticians in many, many ways and many, many fields. Not Standard deviation was not developed 
for the Forex market. Standard deviation is used by statisticians for many, many things. Now, once we calculate these standard deviations, okay, we play, use them and we place a band above and below the moving average uh, based on that calculation of plus standard two, two de standard deviations and minus sta two standard deviations. And I'm gonna get over in a minute and explain to you what a standard deviation is, but that's what you see. So the difference between this moving average and this upper band is two standard deviations. The difference between that moving average here and this band down here, the bottom band, is minus two standard deviations. Now, you do have to understand what a standard deviation is. And I'm gonna to try to explain it to you so you do. You'll never have to do, in fact, the mathematical calculation is so complex that it's always done with a computer. So you'll never have to calculate it because it's one of the standard indicators. You just click on your indicators and it's gonna just drop you off on the screen. And the standard is, a 20 period moving average based on the close, two standard deviations above and below. Now there's gurus out there that try to tell you to use a 20 period moving average based on the open or the open high, low and close divided by four. Or they'll tell you to use a um, an EMA instead of an SMA. All these gurus are their own things. There's even gurus out there trying to tell you to use one and a half standard deviations. But that's not the standard calculation. These are all their modifications. And if you notice, you can easily today adjust all of those things. We can change our standard deviation input to whatever we would like. We can change our center moving average to whatever we would like. We can change this source of that moving average to whatever we would like. But once we change those, they're no longer John Bollinger's Bollinger Bands. And how the other interpretations fit it is up to you and the guru who's trying to show it to you, your own interpretation and your own back testing. So let's go over and first understand what the standard deviation is. And I, you're going to be surprised that when I explain it to you in what I think are layman's terms that you you know, you might be able, you might comprehend, but it took me a long time. You might comprehend what it's trying to do for you. So a Bollinger band consists of the middle band, which is a moving average, and the upper and the lower band. These upper and lower bands are set above and below the moving average by a number of standard deviations of price, thus incorporating the volatility. Okay, how does it incorporate the volatility of price? Well, interesting, in the real world, no statistician would ever calculate a standard deviation. The calculations involved are somewhat complex and risk make a high risk of making a mistake. It's also very slow and time consuming. Now, in its simplest form, okay, a moving average which is the center point of this process is the average of all the data points in that given set. In other words, in its simplest form, the mean, and what's another word for mean in mathematics? The average is simply the average of the data points. So you would take the data points, the, the close, the close, the close, and divide it by 20. Oh, come on, let's get back here. So the standard deviation is calculated based on the mean. The distance, so first we calculate the mean average. That is the moving average in the center. From there, a standard deviation is calculated based on the mean or the average. The average distance. The average distance of each data point from the mean is squared, summed, and average to find the variance. 
Or to put it in other words, variance is derived by taking the mean of the data points, subtracting the mean of each data point, individually squaring each of these, and then taking another mean of these squared. The deviation is simply the square root of the variance. Well, what's the variance? The variance is between the high, the low, the open, and the close. That's the variance of that, that price in that time frame. If you were to take the average of those, and then plot it against the distance between that and your moving average, and then double it, you'd have two standard deviations. You do it minus two, you'd have minus two standard. So what it's doing is calculating the average between the open, the high, the low, and the close for that data point, which is that time frame that you're looking at. But then it, you know, it squares them and does, but it's looking at all the price movement you had. Now, doesn't it make sense if you were to take some calculation and come up with all the variance between the open, the high, the low, and the close in that time frame, and then plot it against what the average price was, that would tell you something significant because just the close doesn't tell you that much, just the open doesn't. But if the price in that, say, that one hour time frame sailed all the way up and then went all the way down, but closed pretty much where it opened your close average would be pretty much to zero. But when you take an effect that it got pushed all the way up and then pushed all the way down and then ended up closing pretty close to where it opened, you've got some valuable information. So you'll never have to calculate these. All you have to do is remember that the middle band is the, is the 20 base, and the middle band is usually a 20 period moving average. The upper band is spread above the moving average by a volatility known as standard deviation, and the standard is set to two standard deviations. The lower band is the exact opposite, is less or, the, or minus two standard deviations. And so that forms the envelope or the upper band and the lower band of that Bollinger band. Middle band, upper band, lower band. Okay. Now that we have these on our chart and we kind of understand what we're looking at, how can we use these Bollinger bands to help us? Well, we have several different ways. Bollinger bands helps us through pattern recognition. Now, you know what double tops are on head and shoulders and double bottom. Well, with Bollinger Bands, we get what's called the M and the W formation. It also helps us see early reversal signals, and I'll show you that on a chart shortly. And it also helps us analyze the trend and detect whether the trend should be continuing or ending. Now, there are many ways to use Bollinger Bands, but an important note that when the price touches the upper band, that doesn't automatically mean sell. Similarly, if the price touches the lower band, that doesn't automatically mean buy. In fact, take it from John Bollinger, man, John Bollinger himself, who said, there's absolutely nothing about a tag of the band that in of itself is a signal. And there's too many really basic, not gurus, but websites and and you know simplistic literature and there's so much blog stuff out you know where they have they have some blogger who's not a financial analyst who's told to write an article on Bollinger Bands and they look up 10 other articles and they write a, a 500 word or 700 word summary that's very basic and what they tell you is when price hits the upper band buy when price breaks the lower band sell that is farther from the truth than you can imagine so let's go over back to the bands and take a look at them. So let me pop them back up here for you. Okay, now we can see on this chart. Now you have to remember the only place and the only way you can trade is here and forward. You can only trade at the window, the wall. 
can only trade where price is now. What happened back here in price might tell you something, but you can't make a trade based on this. You can only trade going forward. And the only way you can do that with Bollinger Band is to practice them long enough and look at them historically enough that you feel comfortable with what you're seeing at the wall and what you're trying to interpret. Now, if we look at how price is moving, here we see price going down and what the band does is starts going down and riding a long price. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to bounce in and out of this lower band, but price should always be trying to, should be trying because the, the bands are adjusting continuously, but price should always be trying to touch that band. When we see price get rejected by this band, that tells us that trend might be in trouble. It doesn't tell us anything's happening. It's a forewarning. One of the most reliable ways to use a mo the moving average of the center line or the basis line is once price is rejected by a band and crosses that line, the moving average line, then you know that this trend this downward movement has ended. It's over. It may come back down and go down a little bit, but it's over. This is the point when it crosses that you would want, if you had a short sale and you were taking your profit, this is the point where when you see price coming down here, you're not sure. Okay. Now, you have some general knowledge here. You have some, here we have our resistance level here, and we would expect price to hold this resistance level. Well, it gets stuck there. So you're sitting back saying, well, should I get out or is it going to continue down? What's new? When we see Bollinger, it break the moving average of the basis line in the Bollinger Band, that's telling you to get out of that trade. Now, this trade moved on and on and on over some time frames, then pushed up and tried the best you could to touch that upper band. Tried to move into a backward uptrend to move back here. Couldn't make it. The bears then took back the market. And at this point, when it broke that moving average again, you could then go into a short period and while you watch it ride the bands down. Once again, we see price rejected by the outer band. But again, until it moved, until it broke that moving average, we weren't sure if that trend was over. And then look at that, it moved, broke this moving average and moved into complete sideways congestion. Now, we have a push back up and, break, and breaking the upper band, but again, it was rejected, but still came back down here, but now it's done nothing because this is the most, at this point on this chart, was the most current time frame. So we would project, based on where price is going, we would like it to see go back up there, but it's still in this congestion mode and we're waiting for something. But it, to trade this, We had to be sitting right here because we're only trading into the future. Okay. Now, by trading into the future, and this is today. So by trading the future, right now we're below the moving average. We d we're not in the markets. We got out of the markets way back here. So we're looking to get back in. So what we're looking for is price to push back up to the upper band or push down to the lower band. <coughs> we're waiting for the Bollinger Bands to tell us what to do. So I just want to clean this up. Now, we have other combinations. We can use Bollinger Bands. Also, we can use them Bollinger Bands to set our potential take profit level. And we can use the Bollinger Band to set our stop loss level by looking at how, and this is called riding the bands, when price moves up and rides along the band. But we see in here, price is pushing to higher highs and higher lows. And what we'd want to do is put our stop loss slightly below our highest low and then take our profit point based on where the band would push to the next level using other pieces of information.
Here we combine it with a chart pattern and other pieces of information. Bollinger Band is, there is no freestanding indicator that's going to tell you exactly what to do on its own. It gives you points. It will help you set your target point. It will help you set your stop loss point. It'll tell you when to take action. Because if you've got a trade all set up and you're waiting for a clue to when to enter that market, the cross of the basis line is the clue to take that action. You know, if you were in a trade, get out of that trade. If you're looking to get in a trade, okay, it's now time to get in that trade. Now. Let's go back to my PowerPoint for a minute, and we're going to talk about pattern recognition with Bollinger Bands. Now, prices can walk the band during strong downtrends or uptrends. This means that there are repeated instances of price touching or breaking through the lower or the upper band. That's why you may want to take action when the price touches either band and might instead prefer to wait to look for a double bottom or what we call the classic M or the three push high formation. Okay. So looking for this is just like looking for head and shoulders, so to speak. It's a slow pattern that emerges. It's a reliable pattern. I find that I never use it because it takes way too long to develop and way too long for my type of CFD trading. But what you would have is this is your W formation. The M formation is the exact opposite. You would not see this first leg at all, but you see price moving down. Price gets, gets rejected and moves back up, gets rejected and moves down. You would not see this development until we, you get what we call the N formation. It's the third leg, and when that third leg bounces off at a same level as that first bounce off, you have an end formation and it starts moving in the opposite direction, it's forming that last leg of the W. So when you have the beginning of the second bottom and the bounce off, it's telling you that there's an opportunity for a buy. You would wait for it to cross the moving average or the basis line, and then you would initiate a buy trade. But of course you want to set your target point and your stop loss point. But it's a fairly reliable symbol, a signal, but it takes a long while to develop. And we have just the opposite, which is the M formation, which is where you would get a short position. So remember, this is always coming off of a downtrend and will tell you when the, you can get an uptrend. Now the markets could reverse in between, just like a head and shoulders, but you form this N. Now this N could be a steep N, or it could be a little n, but it's still an n. So the classic M top is formed by a push to a high, followed by a sell-off reaction, and then a test of the previous high. The second high can be higher or lower than the first high. Watching the price behave like this, a trader may wonder if the stock or the asset is in a new uptrend or if it has met its resistance and the Bollinger Band will help answer that. So here we go, the reverse. What we're coming off is off of a uptrend. It makes the top here, gets rejected, comes down here eventually and forms a new bottom, gets rejected, moves back up here to form a new top, gets rejected and it starts moving down. Well, now you have your upside down N, and the N is the key. And at this point, when that N forms the, the in this case, the M, and breaks that basis line, that gives you a sell signal, or the point in which to initiate the sell. Now, Bollinger Bands also is one of these indicators that works very well in combination with other indicators. Bollinger Bands and RSI are like the perfect match, match made in heaven. Okay. And there are two types 
that you might want to know about. The three pushes high. When we get the three pushes high, it tells us we're moving into a longer term top formation. We will also, in combination with RSI, get a buy signal. Okay, we talked about walking the bands. Bollinger bands can also indicate the end of strong trends. Strong trends cause an expansion of volatility. Okay. So the why, okay, and what I haven't told you yet, the wider the bands, the more volatile the market. When the market, when the bands start getting narrow and contrite, the market has very low volatility. When the market starts to expand in volatility, the bands get wider. So when you see extremely wide bands, you know price is very volatile. When you see an extremely narrow band, price is not so volatile. So that helps you in understanding how you have to set your stop loss because in a volatile market, in other words, wide bands, you need to set a, set a farther stop loss. When the markets are kind of contracting and they're, they're not in high volatility, you might want to set a closer stop loss. Now, volatility tends to, to be mean reverting. Periods of low volatility are generally followed by high volatility and vice versa. In other words, the markets will only stay so long in, in narrow volatility, in you know, slow moving markets. They're eventually gonna break out of that contraction. And when they do, they break out usually and form a volatile market. So there's something called a Bollinger Band squeeze, which is a very easy strategy. Whenever you see the market pulling tight and congesting, and you see those bands getting very narrow. We know, don't know when, but we and we don't know which direction, but we know sooner or later the price is going to break out of that band either upward or downward. And the band is going to start to get wider. That gives you a trading opportunity, and you would trade in the direction of the breakout of the band, of the breakout of, of the basis. So if price breaks down through the basis and the bands get wider, that means volatility is picking up, means more trading action, and it gives you an opportunity for a short squeeze, a short, uh, short trade. So this is known as the Bollinger Band squeeze because you see the volatility is low. And remember, since volatility is mean reverting, it means the bands will probably expand, signaling a potential for an explosive move. A simple way to spot a squeeze is when the bands are at their narrowest they have been for for many months, many weeks, many time, depending on what time you're trading. And then they start getting wider and signaling the start uh, or the end of a trend. So as you can see, Bollinger Bands can be useful by themselves. But remember too, that they can be also combined with other indicators since they are pure price indicators. You might want to consider combining them with volume indicators for even more depth and insight. Ultimately, there's no indicator that guarantees you'll get in at the bottom or out at the top. However, Bollinger Bands, especially when paired with other indicators, such as chart patterns and recognition tools, you can help make better trading decisions. And one of the more interesting ways to use Bollinger Bands and explained by John Bollinger is to use multiple time frames. In other words, you can build your bands on a 30 minute chart, a one hour chart, and a say a three hour chart for our type of trading and use them overlaid on top of each other and find some interesting significant points. So there's many interesting ways we can use Bollinger Bands. And again, by themselves, they don't tell you, they give you some general information, but you can't just exercise a trade because the price was rejected by the top band and then went down through the basis band and so you should initiate a sell. You can't do it without analyzing price action, without looking at support and resistance, without looking at other pieces of information. But Bollinger Bands will give you some significant help in making a successful high probability trade. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. And have a great trading week, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you now. And don't forget, if you have any questions, type them in, and they will be forwarded into our financial analyst team, and you will get a personal answer back.
So just type them into your question screen in your uh, on your screen now. So have a good night and thank you very much for joining us. Bye now.